Welcome back everyone, it's Abdallah here with even more coverage from the PAX Pokemon League that happened at PAX South 2015. Things are getting really exciting now because we are venturing into the Elite Four. On the last episode, we got our very first Elite Four badge. Uh, right here. <laughs> These are my Hoenn badges. Anyway guys, Elite Four badge right here. If you guys want to find out how I got all the other badges, definitely check out the playlist in the description. So here we go, PAX Pokemon League is an awesome um, like get together of great people who love Pokemon and uh, they act as gym leaders, gym trainers, and the Elite Four members. So it's your job to go up to them, ask them for a battle, beat them, earn their badge, and hopefully make it to the top. Yes, I'm on the Elite Four right now. This is my second Elite Four battle. It's against none other than Darren, the Sea Captain. I'm going to read his bio off of the site, PaxPokemonLeague.net. You can check out the site in the description as well. So here we go. Darren has always loved sailing the seas of his native land of Hoenn with his trusty Wingle. One day, while starting out on a new voyage, his ship was boarded by Team Aqua Grunts. As Darren struggled to save his ship, his Wingle evolved into a Pelipper and defeated the Aqua attackers. Ever since, Darren and Pelipper have devoted themselves to keeping the seas safe from Team Aqua and any of others who would do sailors or Pokemon harm on the seas. Uh, Darren received an invitation to the PAX Pokemon League as one of the PAX South Elite Four and gladly accepted. He relishes the chance to test his and his Pokemon strength against the challengers of the PAX Pokemon League. Brave the briny deep against Darren to earn the Captain's Emblem. Okay, so here we go. We're earning emblems now. Badges are no more. These are emblems simply because they're the Elite Four. Now, this is a team that I've had all throughout PAX. I do have a couple of Vaporeons that I switch in and out. Um, this Vaporeon is going to be my Assault Vest Pokemon, but since uh, I can't have two of the same item on any given team, I have to give, Con I have to give Conkeldur a different item. I usually run Assault Vest Conkeldur, um, but in this case I went with the Muscle Band Conkeldur, which gives a little boost towards physical attacks. Not that great, I know, but I needed the Assault Vest for Vaporeon on this one, simply because I know that my Vaporeon has the ability, or the hidden power, of Grass. So here we go, looking at his team, I know what these Pokemon do. Ludicolo, um, sometimes, you know, just runs Fake Out, Giga Drain, Scald, has like the Rain Dish ability, sometimes he's got Swift Swim in order to sweep teams. Um, Pelipper, I don't really see too often, so I was taken aback, I'm like, I don't know what this thing's gonna do, Air Slash, Scald. Crawdont is a foe. Oh my god, Crawdont is so strong with the adaptability and knockoff. So I think that's coming. And the Aqua Jet is pretty obvious on that Pokemon as well. A Blastoise, it's got all the cannon uh, attacks such as Dark Pulse. Um, what is it? Uh, Aura Sphere, um, Hydro Pump, all that silly stuff. Cloyster, oh my god. Shell Smashing Cloyster with the Icicle Spear, Skill Link, Rock Blast. That thing is a threat. So I need to keep some priority alive for that. And the Tentacruel, I know it's a specially defensive Pokemon. Um, it's a rapid spinner. It uh, sets up hazards, spikes, toxic spikes, does scald, um, protect to, scald, to stall things out. So I'm going to have a, an uphill battle. So I need to make sure that my Pokemon are up for the challenge. You guys ready for this? It's going to be a very exciting one. Quite a long battle, too. All right, so here we go. Um, I don't really know who to lead off with, to be honest, so I'm just going to go for Conkeldur. Hopefully I can knock off someone's item, hopefully I can drain punch that stuff back, all the health. Um, but here we go. He's going for Confuse Ray right off the bat, and Confuse Ray is not fun, simply because it's it's hacks. You don't, you don't know if you're going to be able to hit through it or not. So here we go, Conkeldur, hitting through, getting the knockoff. That's good. That's good for me. That does about 50% damage. I'm able to knock off the Black Sludge, so it can't really recover any health back. Um, knowing that it's going to go for a water attack, I go into Vaporeon to hopefully get the water absorbed. So there you go. Predicted that, did no damage against me. He's going to go for the Confuse Ray. I'm going to test the waters to see how especially bulky this thing is. So I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Grass. I don't really have any other moves. I got Ice Beam, Scald, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power Grass. So I'm going to see how much it does. I know it's neutral because he's water type and he's poison, but that really didn't do that much. So right now he's able to get his Toxic Spikes up. I don't want to give him an opportunity to get a second layer of Toxic Spikes up, so I'm going to switch into um, Conkeldur uh, very soon uh, because ultimately um, getting poisoned, the regular poison status versus the toxic poison status by landing on one layer of Toxic Spikes is going to be beneficial to me in the long run. So now he's got the two layers of Toxic Spikes up, that's all you need to Toxic 
po um, poison a Pokemon. So now that I'm guts boosted, I'm going to be doing a lot of damage with whatever move I want to. So right now I was debating, okay, am I going to knock off? Am I going to drain punch? So I went for the drain punch instead. Um, this is not going to do that much against this uh, Pelipper. It just only does a quarter damage. I am fearing the air slash. I don't know why. I, I, I can only imagine he would run stab on it. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't necessarily want to stay in, nor do I want to see what this Pokemon wants to do. Considering the fact I don't really have any moves that attack it. You know, Ice Punch isn't going to do anything. Knock Off could potentially do some work. But uh, I'm going to switch right into Clef Key now. It's a great opportunity for me to, one, set up my light screen and reflect and possibly paralyze this guy. Um, and two, I know that this Pokemon can't really... It doesn't have a Fire-type attack. It doesn't have a Ground-type attack. So I know that I can safely set up my screens and go from there. He's going for Aqua Ring right now. So this is telling me that he's a very bulky-type Pokemon that's going to rely on hefty recovery. Getting the leftovers, getting the um, Aqua Ring recovery. I don't know if it has Baton Pass, but that would be very bad news if it did. So luckily for me, go for the Paralysis, and I get the Parahax on the same turn. So that is very good. So that kind of negates the hacks that I had earlier where I hit myself with Vaporeon. So here we go. Now I've got uh, my light screen up. I'm able to survive this Scald with little to no damage, but... Yeah, you guessed it. They get the burn. Oh my god, I get the burn. So the burn does more damage than the Scald actually did. What the heck? All this hacks over here. So anyway, um, right now I'm going to go into Mega Manectric. This thing is going to be scared out by an Electric type move. Knowing that, um, I can Mega Evolve and possibly Volt Switch. I can possibly go for Thunderbolt. I know he's going to switch out. He doesn't want to stay in because it's four times super effective against him. Um, so that is my strategy right over here. Unfortunately for me, I do get Toxic Poisoned, uh, but that's not really that big of a deal, simply because Manectric can easily Volt Switch out and reset those Toxic turns. So I'm going to be able to Mega Evolve right over here. I'm just going to go straight for an awesome attack that is... Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. Why the heck not? In hindsight, I probably should have gone for Volt Switch. Um, but anyway, here we go. Going for the solid damage of Thunderbolt. It's neutral on Ludicolo simply because he's a grass and water typing. Um, I don't want to stay in on this thing simply because my toxic turns are racking up. And he's got Protect. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. Um, so, goes for Volt Switch. I'm like, alright, well, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I don't want to take any more damage with this guy because I need Manectric to pretty much take out his entire team. They're all water types and I'm super fast. So I just manually switch out in case he went for the double protect and got it, um, and I didn't want to risk that. So here we go. Caesar is in the house. Um, I could easily go for a knockoff. I can go for a swords dance. Um, the only thing that I'm fearing is the fact that he has swift swim, but he doesn't because he revealed that he's got rain dish. Uh, so, and I'm also fearing the scald burn as well. Um, I don't want um, the scald burn to happen, so I switch out uh, right into Vaporeon thinking that he was going to go for, uh, you know, a water. I, I think that he was going to go for the skull. But he switches out into Blastoise for some reason. I tried to predict the, the water move in order to get Vaporeon back up to full again. But here we go. So water, the rain is up. He's got the Mega Blastoise, most likely going to go for Aura Sphere or Dark Pulse, one of the two. Um, but luckily for me, I'm Assault Vested. So for one, I have the light screen up, and I'm super, super bulky. So now I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Grass in hopes that I can knock it out. Boom, look at that. Look at, like, 50%. But that was a crit. So knowing that I do 25% damage on the Blastoise, just stock, I'm going to keep that in mind. So here we go. Goes for Dark Pulse, hits me, and I looked away. And I'm like, wait, wait, what, what? I flinched? You get flinches off a of Dark Pulse? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, you do. So now that my Light Screen wore off, I'm going to take a hefty amount of damage on the next move. Um, I don't know what he's going to go for. If it's a Dark Pulse, if it's an Aura Sphere, I can resist them both with my, um, my Steel Typing. But he goes for the Aura Sphere, and it's neutral against me. So now that Light Screen's off, I need to get Light Screen back up. I don't necessarily need to paralyze this guy. Um, I could have done that and hoped for the Paralysis on first turn, but I figured that in the long run, my, um, my Klefki would definitely help the team out with the Light Screen. So, here we go. Now it's going to be a 1v1 Blastoise against anyone who I want to bring in. I'm thinking, okay, here, let's coax him for the water move. This is going to be awesome. Watch this. So I know that I'm faster, so I'm going to go for the U-turn, switch back into Vaporeon, expecting him to do the water move, and hopefully get that water absorb. If he sees right through that and hits me with a Dark Pulse, then it's, okay, good game, Vaporeon, you're dead. 
Um, but if he doesn't, I get a good chunk of health back. So there we go. Bam. Predicted. Oh, got him. <laughs> so Vaporeon can now live two attacks. Any one of his attacks, I can live it. Um, at the same time, I can do two attacks against him. So if I get flinched here, that plan goes to waste. But I don't. So thank goodness. Here we go. Another 25% on the um, Blastoise. I get a very high roll on this one. So that was very good. So I got a high roll on it. Knocked out the Mega Blastoise. I'm very proud of my very favorite Pokemon, Vaporeon. Knocked out a Blastoise, predicted a lot of switches, and got some health back. It was very fun. So I know that he's going to go for a Giga Drain, or, or some, he's going to go for Protect. So I'm going to go into Caesar right now. If he goes for either of the two moves, that's fine, because Giga Drain is quad resistant. That's not going to do anything. That did four damage against me. Are you kidding me? Right now, I'm going to go for the Sword Stance. I feel that I can set up on this guy. If I do get burned from the Scald, that's not that big of a deal simply because I can Swords Dance to offset. I don't know if he didn't want to try the Scald or he was thinking something else, but I'm going for the Swords Dance right now simply because I've got to do it. I, I need to be able to Swords Dance and bullet punch the rest of his team or knock off or do something else. So I don't want this thing setting up anything, so I go for the knockoff. It does 50% damage, which is great. Goes for the Scald, I'm like crossing my fingers. I'm like, all right, you already got a Scald burn. You don't need another one. And I don't. I don't get burned, so thank goodness. All right, so here we go. I'm do. I'm looking pretty well. Um, I'm going to keep on going for knockoff in case he wants to switch. I know that the bullet punch is resisted, so if he wants to switch out into someone, something's going to lose its item anyway. So I'm just going to keep on going for that knockoff. Right over here, I could go for bullet punch, but there's really no point in doing it because I was observing at the minimum max damage of how much the uh, knockoff was doing, and it would easily knock it out. So here we go. So now my light screen's off. That's not good, uh, considering the fact that anyone that wants to come in will do some heavy damage. He outspeeds me. He's going to go for the knockoff. Oh my god, look at that. Are you kidding me? 7% or 7 damage or 7 HP left. Are you kidding me? I go for my own knockoff, knowing full well that he's going to go for the Aqua Jet. I'm going to switch into Vaporeon. I need the Caesar alive because once that Cloister comes in, I need a priority bullet punch for him. So knowing that the Aqua Jet was coming, he would try to beat my bullet punch. So I was able to go in with this Vaporeon and go from there. Now this is a bold Vaporeon, so... I'm hoping that I can live a adaptability stab knockoff off this guy, but I don't. Ah, oh, Vaporeon, you predicted like three water moves. It was great. So I knocked it knocked off my assault vest. No biggie. Um, I do have Conkelder that can easily come in, mock punch this thing with super effective damage, um, and go from there. So I don't know why he didn't go for the Aqua Jet. That would have been a better play. Maybe he went for the knockoff instead because he knows it does so much damage. But luckily for me, uh, with my muscle band on, that was able to knock out. Good. Way to go, Conkelder. Vaporeon, you did an awesome job. So here comes Ludicolo. Um, he's going to stall me out. This is his set. His set is made to stall out with the Toxic Spikes. So luckily for me, I'm going to continue on Drain Punching. Hopefully in order to give him a big punch and get all of that health back. Um, so here we go. He's going to go for Giga Drain, try to get some health back himself. But we're going to be playing this game where we're going to be draining each other out. He is going to stall out. He's going to try to stall me out. Right over here. He can easily predict me to mock punch. Right? And then stall me out for another turn. Um, so he's got Rocky Helmet too, and I didn't even notice that. That's pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go for the mock punch because then the toxic turns would keep on hitting me. I need to save Conkelder's mock punch for the Cloyster. I need to keep on doing that. Because that Cloyster is going to be big problems once it comes in. He goes for the Protect right over here. It fails. He's going to go for the second Protect. Whenever a Protect fails, the next one will automatically hit. So I'm going to go for Earthquake. It doesn't matter because I'm, I'm going to outspeed him. And I'm going to go for the Earthquake either way. So here we go. Ludicolo is down. This is good. I'm in a very good spot because he's going to bring in his... Um, uh, what is that? His Intentions. Uh, which is the, um, what is this, Tentacruel, and I'm going to be able to super effectively um, Earthquake it as well. But here we go, the same thing as before, going for the Confuser, hoping for the Hacks, and I'm crossing my fingers, I'm like, I need to hit through this, I need to hit through this, bam, Earthquake, done, get him out of here. So good. All right, so now that this threat is out of here, all he has left is that Cloyster, and looking at it, Cloyster on paper is scary. Considering the fact that it usually has Focus Sash and I didn't get an opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock, this is going to be very scary for me. Um, judging by if he's going to use White Herb or Focus Sash, I don't know. Some some run, run either or. I hope I don't hit myself. And lo and behold, I hit myself. Okay, so this is not good. He already set up 
once. So he's at plus two attack. Now he's going for plus four attack. This is not good. He's plus four speed as well. But in my back pocket, I kept Caesar at seven health. Remember, I, I switched him out. Um, so that will do a hefty chunk of damage, even though it's neutral. So luckily for me, I'm able to get the knockoff. Um, he had a focus sash, it didn't really matter. Um, I, I run a Yachi Berry on mine, just in case there's a rogue hidden power ice somewhere. Um, but that doesn't do anything to save me against all five hits of the ice. Icicle Spear, oh my god. Anyway, that's fine. You know what, because I've got two priority users that's going to be able to outspeed and knock this guy out. Here comes Caesar with a seven HP. Doesn't have stealth rock up, thank goodness. Going for the bullet punch. Since it's neutral and he's at minus four defense, he is gonna get knocked out. So it was great on my part to definitely know what priority users I had on my team because if he knocked out my Conk Elder or if he knocked out Caesar, that would have been good game. He would have been able to sweep through my entire team with the Icicle Spear or Rock Blast and do a good job of it. But I knew I had to keep him and that's why it's very important that when you guys are playing against an opponent, you need to write down their Pokemon that they have or take a picture of the screen or something and just make sure that you have a plan for every single one of those Pokemon. It's very imperative that you do that. So that's uh, a pro tip uh, from one Pokemon Pro to you guys. So there we go. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was a very, very long and arduous battle. But we made it. We poked holes through his team and earned ourselves the Captain Emblem. Da -da -da -da. As you can see that there, yeah, Captain Emblem. Got it. Bam. Okay, so that is two Elite Four battles down. We have two more to go. Will we make it to the champion? I don't know. And those of you guys who do know, don't spoil it. It's going to be a very good one, and I can't wait to see you guys um, on the next episode. It's going to be very fun. So, thanks for watching. By all means, if you guys want more PAX Pokemon League, definitely hit that subscribe button. Um, if you guys want more other Nintendo gaming content, you guys know me. I upload loads of Nintendo content. That's typically what I do. Um, if you guys have more time today, definitely click on the screen right now for the annotations of PAX East 2014 and PAX Prime 2014, where I battled the PAX Pokemon League there. Um, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, right over here, bam, at Abdallah Nation. Do it. Uh, but until then, we've got two more Elite Four battles, um, and then possibly... Um, a champion battle. I don't know. Will I make it? I don't know. My team's pretty good. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.